Hey! All right, here we are again! Day 9,662 of quarantine, and here we are, Immortal Minds. Hello, thanks for joining, thanks for tuning in, shoulder roll for you. I have so many things I want to talk to you about today, but first, let me tell you what today's self, today's episode, <laughs> what today's episode is going to be about. Respect your talent. But you know, I like to just chi-chi and chi-chi. Look, can't talk today. I like to just kiki and chitter-chatter at the beginning, just in case, you know, people are getting the notification that I'm live because I don't have a specific time. And so I like to give folks an opportunity to join in. So many things to share with you, though, during this time before we jump into the meat of what we're going to talk about today. Let me, like, pin this. Pin comment. Respect your talent. So, don't know if you heard about the battle between Babyface and Teddy Riley. While I enjoy both of them thoroughly, I think Babyface won for a variety of reasons. Let's see, who do we have? Joanna. Hey, girl. Hey. I will see you in class tonight. So look, I thoroughly enjoyed watching these two uh, greats really be able to go back and forth and do this wonderful banter where they share the music that we all have come to know and love, that truly are hits, that have truly been part of the soundtracks of our lives. Uh, the battle was awesome. Teddy just, I don't know, I guess he was just being Teddy, so there's that. All right, so if you didn't have a chance to tune in, I don't know if it's still up on Babyface's page, but if it is, you definitely should watch. Babyface is amazing. He's also a vampire, because he does not age. Nevertheless, great, great, great. Uh, thing to witness. They broke the internet. There were 500,000 people on watching this battle. Listen, and I love D-Nice. I feel like I go to club quarantine, or sometimes it'd be a little bit more smooth, right? I'd be at club quarantine sometimes. And he has done something epic, right? And I don't think that there were 500,000 people on there. So this, I was absolutely blown away by the participation, especially because this was the rematch since we couldn't rally the first time. No shade. All right. Something else, and then I will just jump on in to respect your talent. I have my notes right here. So I'm, prep, I'm prepped. I'm ready. Two more things, actually. So I don't, so this is the top that I felt like wearing. I really like this color. I enjoy this top thoroughly. And then I came into my office and I was like, what was she thinking? It's not summer. It's cold in here. All right. Wanted to just share that little tidbit so that you could be like, Dorothy, why did you do it? I don't know. Ah, here we are. And lastly, you know, I sometimes like to talk about what I'm wearing or makeup or jewelry or hair or something. So look, these are magnetic lashes. And I've just been so excited to try them. What do you think? Can you tell? I'm all up in the Instagram camera, all up in the Facebook camera. So look, it's like the magnetic eyeliner. Sometimes I wonder if my eyeball is going to fall out. Because there must be like magnets. Duh inside the eyeliner so that the eye, eyelash will adhere. What do we think? Okay. All right, so enough of all that. I just like to, you know, hang and kiki with you for a little bit. Let's go ahead and jump in. Today's episode, respect your talent. So I've got some notes here. I just wanna read this instead of just making stuff up. So when it comes to our talents, I'm not reading yet. Here's the thing. I think because our talents come naturally to us, it's built in, right? And oftentimes it's built in from birth and we just have to uh, wait for it to manifest. 
I think it's like Twilight. I don't know if you watched it or read the books. I thought it was great. But I think it's like Twilight where, you know, Jacob didn't realize he was a werewolf until like he was a, what, what is that? What was he? Maybe a junior in high school before he started turning. Um, I think sometimes our talents are like that. They lie dormant until the opportune time. Doesn't mean though that they weren't always there. And oftentimes while, while we can hone our talent, while we can develop our talent, study our craft, build upon our craft and all of these things, I think there's some part of it that really is innate to us and what makes us so just, yeah, slamming in these streets. And because of that though, Mm -hmm. We take our talent for granted because it comes easy to us. We could do it in our sleep. We could do it with minimal thought, minimal effort. But look, people would pay for that. Whatever it is, people would pay for that talent. And we could go as almost simplistic as you could clean the hell out of a bathroom. You know how many people struggle with their bathroom? I used to have a housekeeper who had a, what did she call her? I think she called her her bathroom technician. And she, I was like, what? Of all the times I've had housekeepers, I've never had one that had a partner that comes exclusively to clean the bathroom. And she's like, you know, honestly, it's her ministry. She will have your bathroom sparkling like you just moved in. She wasn't lying. That lady was the bathroom whisperer. She, I, I, and so let's say that typically it takes an hour to clean your house. The bathroom tech, mm -hmm, the bathroom whisperer and bathroom fairy, she's in the bathroom for the entire hour and it does sparkle. And so sometimes we think, oh, this is just, everybody cleans a bathroom because everybody lives somewhere. Mm, some people do, some people don't. And we can't sit up here and just take our talents for granted. We have to put some respect on that talent. Just because it comes naturally to us doesn't mean it comes naturally to other people. And I think sometimes we minimize our skill and sometimes we minimize all that pain and magic and jazz that we, like we bring the pain, but then there's some little voice in our head telling us like, everyone could do this though. You're not special. Everyone could be a bathroom technician. Everyone could make, you know, candles that pop and colors that just like, yes. Everyone could write a book quickly. Everyone could do all of these things. And that's not always true. When we're not respecting our talent and when we're not embracing this gift that was placed on the inside, how are other people gonna embrace it, right? How? How if we don't embrace it ourselves? So we have to put some respect on that talent. And we can't minimize our talent just because it comes naturally to us, just because we're good at it, flawless at it, great at it, remarkable at it. We don't want to minimize our talents. That is not what we're going to be doing with ourselves. So look, now I am going to read off my notes. So when it comes to this whole idea of put some respect on that talent, self-assurance is something that we're not usually born with, right? So babies and toddlers aren't naturally self-assured. But as we grow, as we develop, as we evolve and transform, it's something that can be built successfully when we're taking the right steps. So when you do meet a toddler that's confident or a little kid or a preteen or a tween or a teenager that's confident, yes, they are building those skills, but that's also because they've got people in their life that are fanning the flames and really being very deliberate and very intentional about cultivating this whole idea of self-assurance. We need self-assurance if we're going to put respect on our talent. Without the self-assurance, we're going to naturally just minimize it and swear up and down that everyone can do it. And there's something, I guess, in here, right, that lets us know, like deep down, that no, everyone can't do 
what I do. Everyone can't do what you do. And even if we think of it like bread, there's a bunch of bread in the bread aisle, they still aren't you, right? Each of us truly is one of a kind. And even when we're in the same lane, same industry, each individual puts their unique spin on it, making it very unique to them. Even if things are similar, it's still the Dorothy way or the Dorothy snap or the Dorothy shoulder roll. Like I know a lot of leadership development professionals, okay? But they don't be coming up on here like, yeah, they don't. And that's okay. That's the Dorothy thing and that's fine. We're all gonna be unique and bringing our own spin and we want to build that self-assurance so that we can do what we gotta do. So what am I saying? If we are going to be flexing our confidence, because that's part of putting the respect on our talent, there's some things that we're going to have to do. That's how we put respect on our talent, coupling that self-assurance, which fuels the confidence. This is important in whatever we're doing, whether we're an entrepreneur, a corporate hustler, a side hustler, whatever it is that we're doing, we got to put respect on the talent, right? Because these are the gifts that were placed inside of us for us to do what we got to do and make magic, whether it's Rona or not Rona. So four things that we got to do because fundamentally, many of us are talented. Oh, we got some people that I have met in my lifetime are dripping with talent. Oh, skills for days. Some people know exactly what to do with it. Cause I'm like, oh, if I, if I looked like that, I could change the world. If I could sing like that, I'd be Beyonce. If I could, you know? And so we see people with all of these talents, but sometimes they're not putting respect on that talent. And that is no bueno, especially in these Rona streets. We gotta be fanning the flames of all of these talents. And when we think about how talented people are, we also know that this talent opens up doors, right? When you know how to sew your butt off, you, that opens up doors. When you can like slay a face, that opens up doors. When you can um, make shoes like come alive and transform how they look and you've got your base, but you can really bring that shoe to life or repair it, that's gonna open doors. But in order to keep the door open and walk through it valiantly, self-confidence is gonna be necessary. So that means also we got to put respect on the talent. We can't be getting in these doors and then minimizing and then thinking that we're going to be able to stay in there. No, we're probably going to get pushed out by the next person with half of the talent who, who just is willing to show up, stand up, be present, and be counted. Listen, if they let you in the room, you do what needs to be done to stay in there, right? Your talent can keep you in there. And it's, it's, an awesome opportunity once we're in there to figure out creatively, intentionally, deliberately, what do I need to do to stay up in here? And that's if that's the room that you want to be in. If you don't want to be in that room, do a duck hunt turn and exit and find another room that really fits what you're doing, where you're going, and it aligns, right? It feels good in your spirit, like it makes sense to you. So. Three things that I want us to do if we're going to make sure that the self-confidence or the self-assurance and confidence are living together like peanut butter and jelly. So let me check. I feel like I saw, ooh, Sarah Noble. Hey, business partner, hey. Thanks for joining. So three things. Oh, I just saw someone else join. Oh, TCS mommy and daddy, they joined, okay. Let me jump into three things that we want to take into account if we're gonna respect our talent, okay? Because confidence and self-assurance need to live together. And while we aren't just already born with all the confidence and self-assurance in the world, we know that this can be cultivated. And as we're fanning the flames, building that self-assurance, curating and cultivating the confidence, let's think about three things that we can do to put respect on our talent because we can't be out here minimizing these gifts, okay? These gifts are what's gonna get us paid. Mm -hmm. Whether we're a corporate hustler or an entrepreneur, these gifts that are flowing from here 
out of there or out of these or out of wherever the gifts flow from out of these you know that is what's going to help us make money and that's what's going to help us make more money the gifts that are built inside of us that's why it's so important to figure out what these gifts are so three things one notice your inner critic is your inner critic telling you things like everyone knows leadership dorothy no one's gonna listen to you everybody's a leader anyway why do they need leadership development there's a million other people doing this and they're way older than you and way more experienced some of them have more degrees than you do right what is our inner critic saying and sometimes we just have to tune in and think about what we're thinking about and then replace that negative thought that that's this is the good thought right eating the bad thought replace the negative thought with a new thought right because we can't just say oh let's not think these thoughts and then be done with it poof thoughts be gone because our brains are just they're always moving i know mine is it's like ten thousand tabs just open at once so if i'm gonna have this thought over here that's just not so good arr, what new thought can i put in place new thoughts like you know what dorothy you bring something unique to leadership you know what dorothy maybe leadership doesn't have to be stuffy anymore maybe it could be fun maybe you could have some shoulder rolls right maybe you could have a little dancing maybe leadership doesn't have to be old white men and thanks to the old white men who came up with a lot of these different theories shoulder rolls to you but maybe leadership can look different now maybe you bring something to the table that that makes you relatable where people can see leadership through their own eyes because of how you're positioning it right we've got these thoughts and some of them are negative, right? If our inner critic is just hating on our swag, how can we get that out of the way and replace it with different thoughts? So that's step one. Step two, ask an empowering question. Here is what a lot of us do so often. We do this thing where we ask these almost like lazy questions. Oh my God, how, I don't, why me? Uh, why is this so hard? Uh, we do this thing where we just kind of get lazy and we do it as an excuse to not have to do our work. And when we ask an empowering question, instead of saying the why me's or the this, why is this so impossible or why is this so difficult or why is this so hard and taking so long, we can ask a different question. How can I get this done? So look at this. Why is this so hard? Why is this taking so long? Why is this so difficult? Look, and literally, even the first time that I went through the questions, I wasn't really thinking about my posture, but that's kind of what happens, right? We're, we're getting down on ourselves by asking these lazy questions when really, because we really are brilliant, what other questions could we ask? How can I get this done? Who do I know who could help me? Have I done something like this before? And what did I do last time? And asking ourselves questions that are gonna move us along in the direction where we actually want to go. So that's number two, asking empowering questions. Let go of those lazy questions, right? Because at the end of the day, what we don't wanna do is be our own worst critic and we don't wanna be our biggest obstacle get out of your way Dorothy what yes get out of your way now because you've got things to do and there's so many people counting on you to get stuff done and move through those obstacles or around them or under them or over them use your prepositions whatever needs to happen in order for you to get to the place that next milestone and that next step because people are waiting for you they're waiting for you at that milestone. It's like when you're running a race, people are waiting and cheering at every marker, like, go oh, girl, here's some water, yes! There's a, hot there's a hot dog stand at the end of this, which is always motivating to me. That's how I got through cross country, hot dog stands. But there's people waiting for you at each step, so you can't give up and you can't get lazy. And lastly, your gifts and your talents are yours, but, and the butt is big, like Sir mix -a said. Okay, but the talents aren't just for you and you alone. Truly, 
They are meant to be shared. Your talents aren't for you. Don't be a hoarder. Share your talents. And because you know that your gifts and talents aren't just for you, that means that as a leader, we are then tasked with figuring out how to bring others along on the journey, right? If you know how to sew, you shouldn't be the only one looking fly. Everyone should be wearing your design. If you know how to make jewelry, you shouldn't be the only one bling blinging and sparkling in these streets. Other pe bring other people along. If you know leadership, create more leaders, create better leaders, right? This is what we're called to do. We are called to share our gifts. This is how we put respect on our talent. All right, so wrapping up. One, notice your inner critic. Two, ask an empowering question. And three, your gifts and talents are yours, absolutely, but they aren't just for you. This is how we begin building and rebuilding this idea of self-assurance and confidence, whether we are a corporate hustler or an entrepreneur, these elements I believe are important to us as leaders. So who am I, y'all? I'm Dorothy Enriquez, the principal and founder of The Communication Strategist, a boutique learning and leadership development forum, helping ordinary people become remarkable leaders. Why be ordinary when you could be remarkable? Huh? Huh? I know there was some nuggets in here that you probably held on to like, yes, what a win. Thumbs up, hearts, all of the above. So here's what I want you to do. Two things. I want you to share this video. Share, share, share. Share, share. And I want you to sign up for my free newsletter, Never Miss an Opportunity to Transform, at my website, www.dorothyenriquez.com. If you're on Instagram and you're like, how am I going to send this video? If you're technologically challenged like me, I'll pose for you. Take a picture, drop it in your stories or your main feed and tell your pal, this was great. I know that I've had my confidence challenges or I haven't always put respect on my talent. You know what I'm saying? But this video really set me free. So I'll pose for you. See, then you put that in the feed or put it in your stories and share with a friend. Follow the communication strategies. It's great. So thank you for tuning in. This has been another episode of Day to Day with Dorothy. As you know, the little bun is napping and living her best life. So I'm going to go check on her. And I will be back here tomorrow to hang out, do some shoulder rolls, see what y'all are up to. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time. All right, Facebook. You know you always get the last shoulder roll. You know, you know, shoulder roll. Uh, 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 uh,